Hello there, short friends. Today I'm going to do a little bit of rambling about some stuff while I test out a new camera. I happen to have some things that I'm going to send off to somebody, and I have a new camera that hopefully works, and I want to test out the video function. So this is a good chance to talk both about swords and capture video and see how well it edits. Who knows? Hopefully I'm capturing audio. We'll see how it comes out. Anyway, first I will show you this. It is a Hanway Skull King. Hanway does a great job with casting, and this skull is really no exception, but the rest of the stuff is a little odd. Now, with a cane, personally, I almost like a shillelagh, where I could take it and beat him with the, the nubbin over here. This is pretty heavy, and it would be painful if it was uh, applied to your skull with some degree of momentum. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily worry. I wouldn't really trust the cane to do that, because this latching mechanism, while it's actually pretty good and doesn't rattle, it wouldn't necessarily sustain this being used like a club. But now, as a sword... You should note, I suppose, that it has a triangular blade. Hopefully that comes out. It's got quite a pointy, pointy, stabby, stabby tip, but in terms of sharp, it is not. So if you're, if you're wanting to poke the guy full of holes, then this will probably do the job, but clubbing him in the head, not so, not so much. That said, <laughs> as a pommel, this thing feels very, very light in the hand. I do like the cane. It's, I like that it's silent. I like that it fits well in the hand. It's actually a very pleasant thing, and the detail on the skull is really, really quite good. I do enjoy it, so if you have some sort of passing interest in these, no, I, I think they're good, but I won't advertise using them as a club. Then again, it's a cane sword. If you want to use it as a sword, I don't know about most sword things, but if you want a Pokemon full of holes, or perhaps something else full of holes, then uh, then this would work. It is It is quite pointy. The next bit I have is a windless flail. I don't know if this is representative of what you buy today or not, but it is a flail, and I like that when it comes down, it doesn't clock me in the fingers. I've had some flails that actually are long enough to spike the user in the hand, which is dumb. Uh, the balls appear to be, well, the ball appears to be, uh, well, not forged from one piece. That's the word I'm trying to say. The chain does look like it's welded, so there's no butts that could turn the spiky ball into an unfortunate spiky ball of death applying death to things that you don't want death applied to. But uh, the spiky ball seems reasonably nice. This looks like it's been used and all of the little uh, spikes are still on there, though I don't know how they're applied. They appear to be made separately rather than one from one forged piece, but who knows. This is where I would like to see some langets. This, if I really whack something, then I wonder how well this bit would hold up. But it appears to be pretty solid, however it's affixed. The wood feels light. It's a round dowel. You can't index it, but the ball is spiky on all sides, so I suppose it doesn't really matter if you do index it. It does feel weird, though. I never did a review on these because, frankly, I don't trust my dexterity and coordination enough to, to use this, and I'm very likely to hurt myself with it, so it's best I pass it on to somebody else more hopefully dexterous than me. Next bit I had was a cold steel war hammer. I don't know really much about the Warhammer. I never really used it much. I've used a couple windless Warhammers on things. This appears also well used. The crow's beak is held up. It has a little, uh, like almost Allen key, which maybe we'll focus on here. It's a little dark, but there's a little thing that keeps it affixed, and then the swell in the wood here appears to keep the, the hammer from flying off this, <laughs> this end, rather than a wedge or something here. The, the hammer could wiggle around a little bit, but anyway, it feels nice and it appears well used, so however it's made, it's seemingly stood up to whatever type of abuses somebody has thrown at it thus far. And it doesn't look like it'd be particularly difficult to reshaft, even for someone as, you know, incapable of doing things like that myself. But I think I might even be able to handle something like this. Anyway, seems like a decent hammer. I just had a few of them, and I'm not really a hammer guy, exactly, so... But if you want one, if you find them for a good deal, they seem reasonably well made. The last bit I have before I send it off is this Cold Steel Gladius. Now this one is used and abused somewhat. It has seen better days, certainly. And, well, I would have liked to review it, honestly, but I don't think it's necessarily fair to, because it has seen, obviously, some use and may not be representative of what you would buy were you to find one. Now, that said, with a plastic handle and a plastic everything and kind of black look to it. It doesn't really have much. That said, if you can find these for 50 bucks, 20 bucks, I don't know, it depends on what you what you see them out there for. Uh, they seem decent. It's a fun little thing, but it's certainly more of a tchotchke of a sword than anything else. It doesn't have a lot of build quality. It doesn't have a lot of much of anything, but this one at least has been swung into things and survived to tell the tale. So I can tell you that at least they, they hold up to some, some reasonable rigors. 
as much fun as it would be to review, I've also just had, I guess, more pressing things to review. These these inexpensive things are, are fun, but I don't know. Um, they're at a price point where most folks can afford to take a risk on it if they like the shape, and if it turns out to be a giant pile of doo-doo, then, um, then you're not at least out that much. Anyway, that's all I've got for you. I hope the video's been interesting. As always, cheers, and thanks for watching.